Hi, my name is Meeta Dani and welcome to this case study video. With me, I have Sharon Taro and she's going to tell you about her art journey and how she's planning to become an art entrepreneur in the coming days. Sharon, thank you so much for joining me in this case study. Please share a little bit about yourself from where you are and what is your experience about art so far and why and how you came to know about me and join my course Mastering Watercolor Realism. Uh, my name's Sharon Darrow. I'm from um, New Jersey in the United States. I started watercolor only a few years ago. I'm kind of a late bloomer. I started at age 61. I'm the mother of three children and three stepchildren. So I've been busy my whole life raising six children, as well as uh, having a career in respiratory therapy. So I've been in healthcare for about 44 years. So I finally decided a few years ago, I want to discover my potential. I've always been interested in art since I was a child. I had not painted anything through my whole career and while I was raising my children. So I started watching some YouTube videos at about age 61. I'm 64 now. And I was always interested in challenging myself, but I was learning piecemeal. For every picture I decided I wanted to paint, I would have to search and find I like how to paint maybe parts of it or whatever, but I was never getting the full picture. So I decided it would be so nice to learn uh, from an expert. And I did actually take two workshops. And um, I suppose this is partly how um, I was led to you. Um, I took two uh, three-day workshops from one of your students. And I enjoyed her workshops and I was pleased with my results and I learned from each one. So I thought, um, I really would like to kick it up a notch. I would like to feel like I could master this. So I did a search online for master level watercolor courses and I did come across you. That is a wonderful journey and I am very sure that some of the viewers of this case study will find this journey very relatable. So Sharon, you joined Mastering Watercolor Realism and then what happened? What you liked about that? Okay, well, the very first thing that I was carrying mindset blocks and self-limiting beliefs, I always thought of myself as a positive person, but I was allowing these self-limiting beliefs from holding me back from my full potential, you made us all aware of those uh, self-limitations that we impose on ourselves mm -hmm. and how they actually can be overcome. Wow. And they truly can. I know that was the most amazing thing for me is that I really did. I began to believe in myself. What I was doing was I was waiting. I was, I was challenging myself with a little bit more difficult paintings, but I was waiting for the perfect painting for me to feel like I had potential as a professional artist. And you taught us that we need to believe um, that we are a professional artist or talented artist and the results will follow. I changed that mindset. I believe that that is definitely the way to go because after taking your course and I did the very first project painting, I got, for me, I feel like I got fabulous results and I'm so pleased. Oh, wow. <laughs> I totally believe that first we need to believe that we are the identity and then once we believe and truly accept that identity then it reflects in our work so when you believe that you are a professional artist your paintings will reflect that professional quality so right. you liked mindset training what else you liked about the course okay oh I just want to add that I actually because of that change I changed my goal for wow. retirement I was originally going to reach planning to retire in about four years and I've moved that up. And my goal is to retire in one year or even less. So I'm ready to start a career in watercolor. Great. Um, what I liked about the course, I loved the way it was structured. It began with a presenting information about mindset blocks and we did a PPP challenge, a 21 day challenge to become a purely positive person. Uh, that was excellent. And then we went through the basics, the elements um, of art, the principles of art, so that we have all the fundamental knowledge um, in place, composition, 
Uh, we actually had assignments where we went out and took photos. We learned how to improve our photo images and um, edit them, keeping the principles of art in mind. That was excellent. And then moving on to uh, the project painting. So how you felt the project session? Was that thrilling? How was that? Was that scary? Oh, it, was, it was a little scary in the beginning. I remember <laughs> others too. Like, yeah, <laughs> you have a blank piece of paper, maybe with the drawing there. I mean, it takes some courage to get the first <laughs> layer of paint down. But I loved it. And I, I shared my progress pictures with um, others that I worked with too. And I said, just, just you wait. That They couldn't believe, you know, after watching the underneath, the very beginning base layers, that it would progress to the final image. <laughs> couldn't wait to see the end, end result. Uh, so are you happy with the results that you got through the project? Yes. Uh, and you taught me some secrets about how to get the sparkles that I got. And, and that was wonderful. Can you show the project painting with the viewers? Oh, sure. I don't know if you, can you see? Wow. Uh, oh my God. This is looking so fabulous. Wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. This is looking just like a photograph. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, share a little bit about how your husband reacted with your painting, your family members reacted. They were just amazed. I do have to tell you a little bit of a joke. <laughs> My husband, he loved it. And I said to him, I bet you didn't even know that I was so talented as an artist. He goes, yes, I did. You have it posted all around the house. <laughs> Remember the assignment where we had to tape up around the house? Yes. Uh, I'm a master watercolor artist, or I'm a well-renowned master color artist, just to remind us to believe in ourselves. So he said, yes, I did. <laughs> you reminded me every day. <laughs> but um, he was, you know, we've been married a long time. And he knows I just started painting a few years ago. So he's amazed. And even my other family members, my sister said the same thing. She had no idea. She knew I always you know, loved art, but she knew I really had never tried other than dabbling a little bit as a child, but I never studied it or really tried. So yeah, That's it's amazing. Good. It feels really good, isn't it? When our near and dear one makes some good comments about our art. Yeah. Shana, I want to let the viewers know that there are a lot of people who believe that watercolor is really difficult. It is very challenging medium and it takes a lot of time to learn. What is your say about it? Do you believe that? No, I don't. Well, we learned it in 10 weeks, even though I did a little bit beforehand. You could come into the course without any experience whatsoever in watercolor and you can paint masterfully, a masterful watercolor painting um, just within those 10 weeks. And it only takes one. It, it really, the only real reason it might be like a little bit difficult than other mediums is, is only because you need to, to plan maybe a little bit more before you start painting. And that's really it. It's not difficult to learn the techniques and how to paint. I want to ask you this question, Sharon. Mm -hmm. There are other people who feel that nobody purchases paintings and it is too difficult to start earning money as an artist. What you did with those four paintings? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I know. I sold four paintings, you know, last month. And, and actually, I sold them really without even trying yeah. I actually followed your instruction one of them was sold mainly because you told me to start getting a contact list together make a list of everyone that I know get their email phone number or whatever so I did I started that because you said that in the very beginning you'll be successful if you do what I tell you to do so I did I followed your direction and I called really a doctor that I work with in the hospital and just asked him if he would mind sharing his personal email address because I am a watercolor artist and I would like to send him some information. And if he's not interested, that's fine. He could, um, if he wouldn't mind sharing it with someone else or whatever. So when I, I just started that conversation and then he said, oh, well, 
I'd like to see some of your works. And I said, well, I don't have a website up and running yet, but I can show you some samples of some of my works. Mm -hmm. So uh, I sent a few and he goes, I'll take that one. Wow. And I was like, I'll take that one? Really? <laughs> that was my first. And I had to like, and I wasn't even sure because I, I wasn't prepared for the sale. I didn't even know what to charge for it. Mm. So <laughs> I quickly got a hold of you <laughs> and asked it, what I should charge. And he didn't bat an eye. He said sold when I when wow. I gave the price. It wow. was um was he happy after purchasing from you? Oh, he was yeah, it was actually my clownfish. He's a pulmonologist. He's an office in Cape May, New Jersey. And I didn't even realize this, but um, in his waiting room of his office, he has big fish tanks and he's clownfish in there. So this is a beach town. Cape May, New Jersey is a is a beach town. Oh. So that was um, my beachy painting and he loved it. And it's going to be in his waiting room so others will see it. Wow, that is a very successful yeah. sale. And then you succeeded in having more three sales, right? I did, yes. Another one that I had, uh, that I had painted before your course, actually, one of my friends that actually used to work for me had posted a picture on Instagram that I loved. And it was, it was outside of a bar in Philadelphia, like an outdoor cafe type scene. Mm -hmm. It was called Standard Tap. Mm -hmm. um and I liked his picture I asked him if he, he would mind if I would use it as a reference photo he said no go ahead that's fine and after I had painted that um he told me that uh he showed it to the owners of the standard tap and they were impressed they liked it mm -hmm. so I thought okay Nita told me to sell off my paintings yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm going to call I'm going to message Eric and just see if maybe the standard tap would like to buy the painting Mm -hmm. and maybe display it in their facility. Mm -hmm. um, and when I contacted Eric, he said, well, yeah, I can do that. But I think I would rather buy it myself. Wow. He bought it. <laughs> wow. But I never went to the standard tap, so he bought it. <laughs> and here, as it turns out, like his, his wife and he, uh, it's one of their favorite places or whatever. So it did have special meaning to him, but I wasn't expecting that. He bought it just like that. That is so cool, Sharon. I'm really feeling this journey so fulfilling to listen to you. So Sharon, if I give you 10 times more difficult subject to paint, do you think that you will be able to? Yes, I do. So my course says that uh, you join Mastering Watercolor Realism and you will be able to paint any subject confidently. Do you think mm -hmm. it is true statement? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Even even though each painting might have a new challenge, I believe that I can overcome that challenge and find a solution for it. Of course. Can you share a little bit about how you liked your mentor's teaching tactics? Okay. <laughs> no, I actually don't see you as strict. I think you motivate us. You don't want to hear excuses, but that's for our, that's in our best interest because you know that would be a weak mindset yeah. to be giving excuses for why we didn't do something. So you do push us in a positive way, but that's, I see that as coaching, like really that's your role. That's what you're supposed to do as a mentor. Um, keep us accountable. And I appreciate that very much. And you're always there for us. Whenever I had a question, if I messaged you privately or I love the Q and A's as well. I tried to attend as many of them as I could, even when I was working, I got permission on my lunch break to attend those Q and A's because we learn from each other. And even during the project paintings, we're all working on different paintings. Um, and each painting you'll face different challenges. So you not only learn how to overcome challenges in your own painting, but you learn to find solutions in all the other paintings that the other class mates are working on as well. Right. So 
what is the best feature that you liked about the course? Like leave every single thing, only one feature if I ask you, what will be that feature? I would have to go back to overcoming the mindset blocks because that's made, um, because that is what has been life-changing for me. So I would have to say that that was probably overcoming my mindset blocks was probably the best part of it. But I learned so much more than that. But that's the piece of it that to me has been life changing. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with the viewer. And I'm sure that by watching this case study, you have found it helpful to understand how smooth it can be to transition from one profession to another profession. So if you are that kind of person who is planning to have a parallel source of income or who is planning to have a transition from any profession to art profession, just understand that the transition need not be difficult. The transition may be totally smooth. The transition can be very fun, exciting, a little bit challenging, but I love challenges and I help my students to love challenges and it can be a lot fulfilling. Just if you have the right mentor, right coaching, right guidance and right mindset. So if you have any questions related to mastering watercolor realism, feel free to contact me. My name is Meeta Dani once again, and my email is meeta.dani at gmail.com. My website is meetadani.com. And you will find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere.